The following program is intended for mature audiences. A Democratic Republic of Sports. The Sportsocracy with ESPN Asheville hosts Tank Spencer and Jeremy Green. And welcome into the Wicked Weed Studio, wickedweedbrewing.com. Drink different. I'm Tank Spencer. He's Jeremy Green. And the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs, I don't think it was everything we wanted it to be. We wanted this to be a close game. We wanted this to be one of those last second, you know, strive for the end zone kind of games. But the Buffalo Bills came out and proved that they deserved the number one ranking in the NFL power rankings that we did last week here in the Sportsocracy. Hey, sacred time. We're doing those at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning live. Uh, and we will answer all your questions about your team. And I I'm going to break news. Buffalo Bills are one again. Bingo. A double bill with a bullet. Yeah. They're the best team in the league, and it's not really all that close. No, not really. I mean, they forced uh, four major turnovers for the Kansas City Chiefs. The defense was able to keep them in check, so to speak. And the offense is just humming right along. They made Kansas City look mortal. Yeah, and here's the other thing. Uh, Josh Allen was really damn good in a monsoon. That should frighten you. Uh, it really should, because that means, and look, I understand snow and rain are different. That means you're most likely going to have to beat them in Buffalo mm -hmm. in January mm -hmm. against that dude. Good luck. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, you made Travis Kelsey look mortal without Matt Milano. Yep. Who did not play in this game. Mm -hmm. That tells me everything I need to know. This team doesn't run the ball well at all. They don't need Zach to. Zach Moss is fine. Devin Singletary is fine. Josh Allen's the best ball carrier on the team. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It does not matter. Dawson Knox gets behind the secondary. Uh, your, your little boyfriend, Daniel Sorensen. Shoe shit. <laughs> uh, that's, whoo, buddy. That's, uh, ooh. Yeah. They, they, I think if they'd been in Buffalo, they might have left him on the tarmac. Mm -hmm. Good God. But I had Buffalo win the Super Bowl coming into the season. They have done nothing to change my mind. They've had one bad half football all year. Yep. And yes, it was at home, and yes, it was against the Steelers, but I don't care. Everybody has a bad half from time to time. Yep. And I just, the floor for Buffalo is so damn high. And then you look at the six, the, the six games they have in this division, because at five left, because they've only played one. Right. I could make the argument that the 35 to nothing they hung on the Dolphins might be the closest game they play in this division. Because they will beat the absolute fuck out of New England just because they can. Mm -hmm. And they'll do it to the Jets, and they'll do it to the Dolphins. And, hey, guess what? They play at the Titans on Monday Night Football this week. And I don't know, for the love of God, how anybody on that Titans defense is going to stop Stephon Diggs or they Dawson Knox. They don't have one. Or Emmanuel Sanders. Mm-hmm. Hell, Cole Beasley's become an afterthought, and he's still one of the best slot receivers in the league. Right. And, and I haven't even mentioned the defense yet, which now has pass rushers galore. Mm -hmm. By the way, I heard a weird story that Jerry Hughes may not be on this team in five weeks. Really? Apparently, they feel so good about Boogie Basham and, and Rousseau and A.J. Epinesa that they view Jerry Hughes to be an ancillary piece. I mean, he played 50-some-odd snaps in this game. So that, that could be just a reporter you know, uh, trying to talk about something because you can only blow your team so, so much, much over the right. course of a few days. Right. But I, I found that odd. I, I mean, I, and I'm not against it. I loved Greg Rousseau coming in this draft. I had him in the top five of my first mock draft. Mm -hmm. a, and I never really understood how he was going to get to the back end of the first round. And well, then he did. Yeah. And I love Boogie Basham and oh, I love Ed no, Oliver. No, no. I know he hasn't been everything you wanted him to be, but now Star Latula Lay has been. Right. A, I don't have anything negative to say. No, they have all of the pieces. They have they have a uh, championship caliber coach, in my opinion. I've always been a big fan of Sean McDermott. And Brian Dayball is going to be a head coach real soon in this league. They have they have just leadership top to bottom. They've they've got good you know good guys, and they still have that. They're so they're one of the flashiest teams in the NFL mm -hmm. with Josh Allen. But they still, for some reason, have that bring your lunch pail to work mentality. It's from Buffalo. Well, I it's mean, I, and, the, I, and I get it. It's the mantra of the city manifesting itself in the team. Yeah, and I get it, but it's 
still, you you just don't really expect that. No, and, they haven't I mean, been I, this good since Jim Kelly, and it's not even close. Oh, and I I forgot to mention this part too. Have you? The, so their bye week is after this week. Yeah, so they play the Titans in bye week. Have you seen the three teams they play coming directly out of the bye? No. Miami Dolphins, Jacksonville Jaguars, New York Jets. Total score of those games will be somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 to 6. The next three, Colts, Saints, Patriots. Oh, and they get the Saints in an even-numbered week. So. Oh, so no Jameis Winston. Oh, no, they suck again. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's not going to be a lot of losses this year for this I don't team. see a loss until they, play, until they play in Tampa. Right. And to me, that's a Super Bowl preview. Mm-hmm. Potentially. Yep. The NFC has a hell of a lot more good teams than the AFC does. Yeah. But. but the Buffalo Bills this past week were able to do to Pat Mahomes what the Tampa Bay defense did to him in the Super Bowl. They, they got after more. him. They pressured him. They, they made him turn the ball over. They hit him eight times. It was just relentless. They've got everything that they need to win a championship. Um, Kansas City, in my opinion, does not have everything they need to win a championship. Their defense is not good. I don't think that they can win a championship with that defense. This defense is, it, it, I, I'm not going to say markedly worse, but I think it is worse than the team that won a Super Bowl two years ago. It does need to be stated that Chris Jones did not play in this game. Mm-hmm. I don't know that it mattered. It didn't. It certainly wouldn't have changed the outcome. I'm curious if it if you would have looked markedly better. Mm-hmm. Here's what scares me. You can't run the ball at all. Clyde edwards Larry, you ready to come around to my side on that? Like, I mean, no running back that's 5'7 and 2'10 has, and didn't run the 40 and faster than 4'5 has ever run for 1,000 yards. Yep. I said on the night he was drafted, I bet I've said it 58 times since. Mm-hmm. I just look at it and go, how much more would I like this team if you had DeAndre Swift? Just think about that, because you oh, took yeah. Edward Dallaire over Swift. And, and look at what he's doing in Detroit as a receiving downs back on a shitbird team. Mm-hmm. And now just think about how much that would tie up linebackers. It's one decision. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to level you. I don't really think they have a second receiver. I don't love Miko Hardman, and I never have. I think he's fine. He's fluky. He's very fluky. Mm-hmm. And I don't love Byron Pringle, and the Josh Gordon thing is absolutely fucking irrelevant to me. <laughs> The margin for error for this Kansas City team is thinner than it's ever been mm-hmm. since Pat Mahomes has been the starter. Mm-hmm. Now, with all of that being said, when we do when we reveal our power rankings tomorrow, the number next to the Kansas City Chiefs still does not have two numbers. No. I said nobody would break my top four all year. Well, it took five weeks for somebody to break my top four mm-hmm. and for Kansas City to fall out of it yeah. because I don't think they're one of the four best teams in the NFL. However... Am I going to say, hey, Andy Reid can't figure this out and throw dirt on them? No. No, I'm not. I'm also not going to look at the Raiders or the Broncos and go, hey, I know they're better than the Chiefs. And I look at the schedule for the next three weeks and go, that's three wins. Mm-hmm. And three, on November 1st, we're going to be looking at a team that plays on Monday Night Football against the New York Giants, and they're going to win. And they'll be 5-3, and three, and all of a sudden, everything will be right with the world. Right. And then does the schedule get tougher from there? It does. But I still look at this as a 10 or 11 win team that's going to make it to the playoffs and probably play the Tennessee Titans. And I like you better than the Titans. Yeah. And by the time February comes around, middle of, well, middle of January, end of January, beginning of February, this could be a completely different team. Yeah. So just calm down. You can't win every game you play. You've lost three games so far this year, and I would argue you've lost three games to seven of the best teams in the NFL. Yeah. You're two and three, and you still in the in the hierarchy of the AFC. You're you're at worst what third third in the AFC? I can't get fourth. I, I can't get past third. I have Baltimore and, and Buffalo ahead of them, and it is just by. A, 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 just a wispy little Peter hair between them and the, the Baltimore Chargers. Ravens. And the Chargers. The Chargers. I, th- I think the Chargers. There's three are AFC of teams me. in a row for me. Yeah. I'll go ahead and tell you Kansas City's ahead of the Chargers. Yeah. But it's by so little. 
and I may change my mind on that by in the yeah. morning. I think for because now, they, the, because now that I've said that out loud, I'm like, I don't nah, know that I believe that. Nah, I think the Chargers are ahead of the Kansas City Chiefs. I think they're my four in the AFC right now, behind the two teams that you said, and they're going to be back up there. I mean, they just got to get they got to get into a rhythm. They got to find some things out, and guess what? They they got to stop playing the Buffalo Bills because <laughs> you didn't look good. Mm -hmm. You did not look good playing the Buffalo Bills this week, and you got to figure something out if you want to be able to beat them in the AFC Championship. And you game. got a lot of time before that could be a problem again. Yep. And you got a lot of winning, winnable games on the schedule. Yep. I will say, uh, you've called on Marlon Mack. Uh, call again. Yeah, call again, mm -hmm. because I, I, I like the fit there. Mm -hmm. That's a legitimate number one running back. Yep. And I think this team needs that. I agree, and it's also going to help out my fantasy team, so make that damn phone call. And by the way, they miss Sammy Watkins more than people think. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe that. Yep. It was a hell of a game, Buffalo 38, Kansas City 20. We will see it again. I have a great feeling about that coming up in these uh, upcoming playoffs. Stick with us here throughout the entire season. Get all our team-by-team -team content. Just hit that subscribe button, and, of course, join us every weekday morning live at 10 a.m. here in the Wicked Weed studio. I'm Tank Spencer, he's Jeremy Green, and we will see you next time.